Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome check, to the check. Veterans Memorial Plaza for today's annual Veterans Day ceremony. to the skies above Pico Rivera. We have a very special salute to all our veterans. Flying overhead now are vintage World War II North American AT-6 airplanes by the Condor Squadron Officers and Airmen's Association. city of Pico Rivera for our annual Veterans Day ceremony. Wasn't that great that Condor Squadron Officers and Airmen's Association fly over? Wasn't that fantastic? We always try to have something special for our veterans and for our community here in Pico Rivera. And thank you all for attending our Veterans Ceremony. Now today's program is sure to inspire and fill you with great sense of pride for our country. And not only do we plan to honor and commemorate our veterans all across our nation, but we'd also like to extend a heartfelt thanks to all the brave men and women of the armed forces. And I'd like to acknowledge our Veterans Post members joining us today. Please stand and be recognized when you hear your post. American Legion Post 341. Please stand. In American Legion Post 411. In our Veterans of Foreign Wars 7734. Thank you for being there for our veterans here in our wonderful community. Now today's special Veterans Day program pays tribute to the all-American veterans who proudly serve, who have served this great nation. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with all of you today and to come together to salute our service members for their remarkable courage and immeasurable sacrifices. Now I'd like to begin by sharing some history on how Veterans Day began. Now, Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November 11th, 1919, during the first anniversary of World War I. And in 1926, Congress passed a resolution for an annual observance of this celebration on November 11th, and that day was chosen as the appropriate national holiday. And today, we gather here to honor all our veterans in Pico Rivera to show our gratitude and appreciation for your service. Now, honoring and supporting our veterans here in the city is very important to each and every one of us. Now, collectively, we all agree that our veterans need our support, and to that end, I'm happy and proud to announce the success of our Veterans Resource Center located here inside the Senior Center over my shoulder. We've been open for over a year now, and the city has serviced hundreds of veterans this past year, and for that, we are extremely proud. Now the city is dedicated to providing veterans, their family and survivors with the resources and the services they need. And the center is staffed by veteran service officer, Kenneth Gonzalez. And Kenny uh, is a great individual who's been a key part of success of veterans programs. And he is also a resident of Pico Rivera. Thank you, Kenny. Veterans who wish to schedule an appointment with the Veterans Service Officer can do so at a special Veterans Resource Table that is set up uh, up next to my uh, right shoulder. Now a special thanks to our partner, County of Los Angeles Department of Veterans Affairs and the Pico Rivera Veterans Commission for making that all possible. Big round of applause for our Veterans Commission here in Pico Rivera.
Now transitioning, uh, once again, we're here to honor our veterans and we come together as a community to honor and recognize the American service members past and present. As you enter the event area this morning, you may have noticed a small table here in place of honor, and it is set for one. This table is a way of symbolizing the fact that members of our profession of arms are missing from our midst. They're commonly known as POW, prisoners of war, or MIA, missing in action. We call them heroes. They are unable to be with us this morning, but are never forgotten. Thank you for defending our freedoms, nation and family, and thank you for answering the call of duty. We shall never forget your sacrifices. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the musical performance of the National Anthem presented by the Southern California Brass Band.
Now, if I can have Pastor Drew Cohen from Hope Community Church come up and lead us in a prayer. Pastor Drew. What a pleasure it is to be here today. I thank God for his goodness. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we just come to you this morning and we are so grateful. Father, we're grateful for our nation. We're grateful for our city. But Father, today we're grateful for these men and women who have sacrificed for our freedoms. We love you and we thank you for what you're doing in our lives and in our city. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor, Pastor Drew. Now I'd like to take a moment to introduce some special guest with us today. And uh, I want to give a big warm welcome to our state senator, Bob Archuleta. <laughs> and communications director, Fred Zermino. <laughs> our LA County Board of Supervisors, 4th District, Janice Hahn. Field Deputy Matt Johnson. <laughs> LA County Assessor's Office Jeffrey Prang, Field Representative Aldo Arellano. <laughs> Our City Manager Steve Carmona. Where are you, Steve? In the back, having breakfast. There he is and our Parks and Recreation Director, Pamela Ugar. <laughs> Pam, thanks for putting this event together. And our Commissioners, Pat Salcedo. <laughs> Parks and Recreation Commissioner, Pat Salcedo. And Commissioner, Kimberly Garcia. <laughs> Planning Commissioner, Robert Martinez. Commissioner Bobby Tanner, our Veterans Commission. <laughs> Commissioner Daniel Garcia, our Veterans Commission. <laughs> and our School Board President, Esther Mejia. <laughs> Thank you all, uh, special dignitaries. Now, I'd like to have come up to the podium, our Mayor Pro Tem, Andrew Laura. Today, as we come together to honor our veterans, we reflect on more than their bravery and sacrifice. We consider the lasting legacy they have woven into the fabric of history. Each of us leaves a mark through our lives, in our relationships, our work, and our achievements. But the legacy of our veterans is unique and extraordinary. These men and women are part of what is, what is widely recognized as the most formidable military force in history. Their legacy transcends the battlefield. It's about the enduring gift of freedom, and a better life for countless of pe people. Look at Europe, now thriving in freedom, a testament to the sacrifices made by American soldiers. Reflect on South Korea, a nation of prosperity and democracy, standing in stark contrast to its northern neighbor, North Korea. This reality this defense of freedom at the 38th parallel was made possible by the steadfast commitment of our veterans. A recent news report highlighted the challenging realities in some regions following the reduction of military presence. It featured a nine-year-old Afghan girl, visibly distressed being compelled into a situation beyond her years, a proposed marriage to a man in his 60s. 
This scene, difficult as it is to imagine, contrasts sharply with the environment that once existed in Afghanistan under American influence. In those days, a young girl like her might have been attending school, embracing a life of learning and potential. The presence of American forces had, for a time, opened pathways to education and self-determination, offering a stark different reality to the one this girl faced. The withdrawal of this presence has unfortunately, unfortunately led to a regression in these hard-won gains affecting the lives of many, especially the young and the vulnerable. In Pico Rivera, we are soon to honor the more than 58,000 Americans who sacrificed their lives in the Vietnam War. The Mobile Vietnam Memorial, a scale replica of the Washington DC Monument, will be displayed in Smith Park. This is not just a tribute, it's a tangible reminder of the profound sacrifices made for freedom. On behalf of the citizens of Pico Rivera, I express our deepest gratitude to all veterans. Your service is the epitome of nobility. You have been a force for freedom and decency in a world that often lacks both. Our nation continues to strive towards perfection, a journey made possible by your dedication and sacrifices. To all veterans, thank you for everything you have done and continue to do your legacy is our liberty, and for that, we are forever indebted. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And now some remarks from Council Member Gustavo Comacho. Good morning, veterans. Good morning, Pico Rivera. How are you doing? How was breakfast? Excellent. How was the flyover? Yeah. It was short, but it made it. And it made it on time. That's a good thing. You know, it's always great to be here with you. As my colleague said earlier, here in Pico de Vera, we always support our veterans. Uh, Pico de Vera, as you know, was built by our veterans, and we never forget that. For that reason, we have a, a special monument, the Pico de Vera Veterans Monument, located behind me, that was originally constructed back in 1973 to honor our veterans and to memorialize our hometown heroes that were lost in the field of battle. Later on Memorial Day 1998, the Eternal Flame was dedicated. This, one, this was done through the cooperation of the city, the county of Los Angeles, which are now represented by our supervisor, Janice Hahn, uh, and most importantly, the Pico Rivera Veterans Council, which included member, members of American Legion Post 341, 411, and the veterans of Foreign Wars Post 7734. In 2018, I was proud to have led an effort to enhance the Veterans Memorial Plaza to commemorate our veterans as you see it today. It's a legacy that we as city leaders wish to continue and acknowledge. For all your sacrifice while serving our country is a huge debt of gratitude that we all owe each and every one of you. To all our veterans here today, throughout the city and throughout our country, I wanna thank you for your service. And we do, we have this Memorial Plaza. As you know, the internal flame has never been turned off since it was uh, lit up back when it was installed. We remember all our members that were lost. We continue to support our veterans as you learn about the Veterans Resource Center with our Veterans Resource Officers. We in the city of Pico Rivera, thank you. Thank you for your service and we'll always be here for you. Have a great day. Thank you, Council Member Gustavo Camacho. Now, a few remarks from Council Member Dr. Monica Sanchez. Thank you. I'm proud to be here today with all of you. Today is for you, for our veterans, and I especially want to thank each and every one of you for your service. Not everyone took on a job where you knew your life would be at risk. However, you did it anyway with courage and bravery, and I'm especially grateful for that. 
I want to especially thank um, my shout, uh, shout out for my commissioner that I selected, Bobby Tanner. She's a woman, one of the few women veterans from the Air Force, so thank you. Thank you to all the women veterans out there. We also have Mr. Garcia, uh, Mr. Dan Garcia. He is the commissioner for the city and also a, son at, a, a teacher at my son's school. And so thank you for all of your service that you've done for our country and for our city. Um, I also wanted to share, um, I'm very excited for our guest. I wanna thank our keynote speaker. And you're gonna hear a little bit more about his background if you haven't already read the program. So Gil Carillo is not only a, a veteran of the Army, but a veteran of the uh, LA County Sheriff's Department. And I want to thank especially our first responders that not only served our country as military veterans, but also continue to serve our county and our city in that capacity. So thank you to all of our sheriffs, firefighters, and first responders. So I, I think we have one more, I think, uh, speech and you will hear from Gil. So I jokingly told him that when he was catching uh, the Night Stalker, I was about five years old. <laughs> and so one thing that I realized is that veterans and our sheriffs, they're protecting us when we didn't even know it. They're protecting, the, protecting innocent children, women when, to, from threats that we don't even know. And so I wanna thank you veterans um, today on Veterans Day, but I hope that we can do this every day to show you how much we care and how much we know that you sacrificed for us. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Dr. Monica Sanchez. And now, the comments from Council Member Johnny Garcia. Good morning, Pico Rivera, how we doing? It's great to see you out there. Before I get started, I want to thank the Grand Architect of the Universe for this veteran gathering here this morning. Coming out here today is always such an honor. It gives me an opportunity to thank you, the veterans, who decided early on that you were going to defend this great country of ours. For those that have served, you have such pride in putting on the uniform. It doesn't matter what branch of service you served on. Okay, maybe it does a little between the branches. But there's one thing in common, and that is the American flag that adorns a soldier's uniform. Each branch of the military fights for the common good and for the good of this beautiful country. I wanna let all our servicemen and women know your service is noble and it definitely does not go unnoticed here in the city of Pico Rivera. A big shout out to our auxiliaries, VFW 7734 Auxiliary, American Legion 341, American Legion 411, and one year this month is the MOCA, Military Order of Cooties Auxiliary. I see you, Terry. <laughs> Thank you all our auxiliaries for the service and support to the comrades and our veteran facilities. And finally, to our veterans and all their families, thank you. May God bless you, not only today, but always. Well said, well, well said Council Member Johnny Garcia, and now, some comments from our special guest, Senator Bob Archuleta. Good morning, Pico Rivera. Thank you for your welcome you gave me earlier. Uh, been a while. I look around and, and I've said, oh my God, I haven't seen you. I haven't, oh, and they kept on and on and on. But I will tell you, ladies, you look fantastic. Gentlemen, you're just as sharp as ever. It's been a few years, but it has been a difficult time because I can't come here and, and address you every year because of the fact that now I represent a million people because of you, because of Pico Rivera getting behind me and sending me off to the Senate to represent you in the state of California. 
And I think we've been doing very well. I've been named the chairman of the Military and Veterans Committee, which represents all the veterans across the state of California. And my committee fights to make sure that veterans are not forgotten, their families are not forgotten. So what an honor for me to be a chairman. The other thing that I'm so proud of is the fact that I've been able to go by and visit some of our 31 military bases on behalf of the governor, to be on his council, to be named, to be on that council with retired admirals and generals as we go from post to post. And I will tell you this, to walk in and they'll say, uh, Senator, where are you from? And I'd say the proud city of Pico Rivera. And of course, they'll ask, where is Pico Rivera? And I said, well, we're about 18 miles east of the border in the civic center of, of uh, Los Angeles. But we're a proud city, not very large. You know, nine by nine, 68,000 people made up of more veterans, seniors, men and women who've served this great country, children that are growing to be our next generation of doctors, lawyers, and support system for our city, our county, our state. And it is a proud city where we have a women's club that has continued to support men and women from El Rancho High School, our educators at El Rancho High School. God bless you for what you do. So we're a city that has combined true Americanism, patriotic, that say, you know, we're God and country. And I'm always proud to say, as I've gone from church to church, I've got to acknowledge my wife Rose, who's sitting in the audience, we were uh, <laughs> married at St. Hillary's. So we've got our history here, and she's a Donette, by the way. And, uh, but I'm so proud to see all of you here. The flyover, what a great tribute to our men and women in uniform. As we begin this day, and, and uh, it's not gonna be over very soon, because I want you to hear from all the speakers. But I will tell you this, I look over to my left, your right, we've got the Sheriff's Department. Captain, thank you for your leadership. Let's give her a big round of applause. And to the men and women who serve Pico Rivera, and our firefighters, Fire Station 40 and 24 and, and 3, thank you for what you do. I don't know if you know this, but the County of Los Angeles gives us the support. Janice Hahn, thank you for doing that because we've got the best firefighters in the entire county right here in Pico Rivera, fire station number three. When there's a call, whether it be in the City of Commerce, Montebello, Diamond Bar, wherever, even overseas, fire station number three jumps to volunteer and they'll go all over this world because they are from Pico Rivera. So we're proud of them. And that's what this city is all about. Service, dedication, duty. And speaking of duty, let's go ahead and begin by asking those who served in the United States Army to stand and be recognized. Stand up. United States Army. Round of applause. All right, Doughboys, thank you so very much. I salute you for your service. God bless you. When you're running off to uh, basic training, they forgot to tell you it was gonna be a long, lonely road. They forgot to tell you, you may not come home at all. And you may not come home with your buddy you joined up with, but you signed up anyway. Welcome home, United States Army. How about the United States Navy? On your feet, sailors. To the sailors who protected us on sea and land in the air. We appreciate your service, sailors. And I will tell a story about sailors in a little bit. But thank you. Welcome home. I salute you. So we got the Army, the Navy. How about the United States Air Force? We got some flyboys out there, men and women who served in the United States Air Force. Thank you. As a former paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne, I'm not happy with you sometimes because it was you who would fly me over the drop zone and throw me out the door and say, goodbye. <laughs> So the Air Force, as you landed somewhere and had a hot meal, you know, we were out in the field somewhere. But I won't take it personal. Honest, Air Force. All right, we got the Army, Navy, the Air Force. How about the Marine Corps? And belated birthday. Happy birthday, Marines. All right, Marines, thank you for your service. If you got a Marine next to you, you're in good hands. God bless you for your service. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps. How about the Coast Guard? 
We don't have those very often, but let's give them a round of applause. The Coast Guard. And we've got one more. I don't know if you know this, but we have a branch off the Air Force. It's called the Space Force. Have you heard about them? The United States Space Force. And uh, I had the privilege to go to the, the air base over there. And I was telling you that I've got to tell you, these are the sharpest young men and women that I've seen. They work on the computers. They work on the uh, things that we see up in space that that's their job, to protect us throughout the world, but up in space. Sharp young men and women, the Space Force. So let me just take a moment out to recognize just a couple of people that are here, and I've got to do that. And that's those who served in World War II. You know, people don't realize that we're sitting here in this beautiful city of Pico Rivera because of their sacrifice. The World War II veterans went off after the Depression built this beautiful city. They built cities around us, the county, the state. They came back as our teachers, our lawyers, our mechanics. They came home and created what we call America today. So the World War II veterans who saw action, or maybe some that didn't, didn't matter, in Normandy, Nijmegen, Holland, in the Pacific, in Saipan, the Marines, Saipan, Iwo Jima, it went on, the Navy, it was the aircraft carriers. God knows what they saw, but when it was over, they came home and they said, God love us, we'll never forget the sacrifice that we made. And World War II veterans, if I can have you stand one more time, if you're able, please to be recognized. You built this country, you deserve this recognition. Look at that. What do we got? One, two, three, four of them, five of them. World War II veterans. Stay on your feet for just a minute. Stay on your feet. We want to take a couple of pictures. World War II veterans. Thank you. God bless you for your service. You have become our grandfathers and grandmothers who've given us so much. They've taught us what dedication of God and country is all about. They taught us to never turn back and say, I would have done it, I should have done it, because veterans, you have done it. You served with honor and dignity. Today, we, we saw the folding of the flag. We saw uh, Javier point over at the uh, POW MIA table, prisoners of war, missing in action. And it's back there behind me. The black flag with the prisoner of war, POW, it's there. All of us who serve know exactly what that means. And I want you to know, yes, Vietnam, 58,000 were lost, but how many were not brought home? How many were lost as POWs, MIAs? And that flag flying here as it flies across the nation reminds all veterans that we shall never forget our POWs and our men and women missing in action. That's what makes America. We've heard the term, Never forget your brother or your sister. Always be ready to fight to continue the fight. And I think that's what we're doing here in America, continuing the fight. They look to us around the globe right now. They look to us for peace. They look to us for readiness. And they look to us to stand fast with our families, to be ready to leave our hometowns and go and serve. And every one of these veterans, every single one of them, that's out there, if I asked you, you gotta go back, are you ready to go back? They would stand up for a second. Are you ready to go back? Yeah. That's right, because that's what America's about, and that's what Pico Rivera's about. So I wanna tell you, God bless you for your service. Welcome home from this old trooper. And I wanna share something with you, because a lot of you have asked me about my two sons, Brandon and Matthew, both paratroopers, both serving right now. I'm the only senator in the state of California, maybe the nation, that has two sons on active duty, both West Point graduates, both combat veterans. Rose and I saw them go off to battle, and we knew when they were called to go to Afghanistan, Iraq, and Matthew, being the youngest, Special Forces Green Beret, a team leader, you know what those special forces do? Well, he was the team leader as a captain. Four deployments, came back, Purple Heart, came back, I'm sorry, with the Bronze Star, and Brandon went off to Afghanistan and Iraq, came back with two Bronze Stars. One of them uh, right now is a lieutenant colonel. Brandon was here 
as a guest speaker one year. Well, now he's a lieutenant colonel. How about that? And Matthew's a major. Pico Rivera, how about that, huh? They're doing well, they're safe, and you know, they've made us grandparents, Rose and I. But there's nothing like being a grandparent. Right, everyone? Being a grandparent. So for those grandparents that have seen their nephews and nieces and godchildren and grandchildren going off, thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandpa. Once again, I'm so proud of Pico Rivera. I'm proud to represent you, and I'm proud to say Pico Rivera is my home. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Archuleta, for joining us this morning, and we love those words. It's our very own Senator Bob Archuleta. And now I'd like to bring up to the podium our beloved Los Angeles County Supervisor representing Pico Rivera, Janice Hahn. Thank you. First, I begin my speeches with a land acknowledgement. And so as we talk about freedom uh, and the things that are meaningful, I want to acknowledge the first peoples of this unceded land which we occupy currently. And with respect to their elders, past and present, we recognize the Chumash, the Quiche, the Serrano, the Totavim, and the Tongva as the original stewards of this land, its air and water, and we continue to support them and lift up their stories. Thank you, Pico Rivera, for hosting this event and giving us all an opportunity, a moment in our very busy lives um, to honor and thank our veterans and to the servicemen and women who are with us here today we do thank you for your service your bravery and your sacrifice and i was given a note to give a shout out to a very special veteran with us today um, he was on a navy warship during world war ii he enlisted at age 17 and he is 97 year old, years old, a resident in the audience with us today. Can we please give a big shout out to Ray Gonzalez. Oh, there's Ray right there. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, let's give him a big shout out. 97 years old. My father, I grew up in a, in a veteran family. My father, Kenny Hahn, was uh, in the Navy uh, and was a captain of a refrigerator ship uh, in the Pacific Theater. He obviously took the supplies uh, to all the rest of our uh, fighting military. Uh, but my uncle Gordon Hahn was in the Merchant Mariners. So uh, there's a branch of the military that is many times forgotten. Uh, he did the same job as my father, taking supplies to and from, transporting uh, military folks to different places. And yet, when the Merchant Marines came home, uh, they were not recognized as uh, veterans. Uh, even though they lost more of their uh, men per capita than any other branch of the military. And it was not until the 70s um, that that was rectified and they were considered veterans. But one of the things we in this country did uh, when the, all of our men and women came home after World War II, remember we gave them uh, the GI uh, Bill, the benefits. They got home loans to purchase their first home. They got uh, money to go back to college. Uh, and yet the Merchant Mariners uh, didn't receive those benefits till they were much older and probably had already uh, bought their first home. But one of the things that I did when I was a member of Congress was I fought to recognize uh, those Merchant Mariners who had uh, fought in World War well, They didn't really fight. Uh, they were considered sitting ducks uh, in World War II. And after much effort, and several Congresses that went by and didn't do it, we finally awarded the surviving Merchant Mariners of World War II the Congressional Medal of Honor for their service. And I also want to give a shout out to our LA County Sheriff's uh, Department who are here today. Thank you, our LA County Fire Department whose rank 
backs of both of those departments are filled with veterans. And we know, uh, and I look forward, Gil, to hearing uh, your talk today, because we know uh, veterans do come back and fill ranks in another public service uh, type of career. And I also was happy uh, to partner with the city of Pico Rivera to open their Veterans Resource Center, and it was already mentioned, it's at the, your senior center. And it was important that um, we got Ken Gonzalez, um, who is a part of our LA County Department of Military and Veterans Affairs to be assigned uh, to your Veterans Resource Center so you have a real person who can help you uh, navigate uh, so many things uh, in your life that you have earned and you've deserved. And I just briefly want to talk about something that I do think we need to address. And it's something I don't think anyone in this country should be proud of. The fact that we have so many veterans who are sleeping on our streets at night and who are homeless. Uh, it's a national tragedy. It's a national tragedy. Bringing our unhoused veterans inside, giving them the support they need to turn their life around is my top priority. And I heard somebody say, fix it. Um, let me tell you, I can't do it all, but the thing I've most recently done, thanks to the state of California giving the county some money, we have purchased a hotel in San Pedro, a 60-room hotel, and we are bringing in unhoused veterans who were sleeping on the streets last week. Now they're inside in a clean, safe room. We're giving them the attention they need, the addiction help that they need. We're transitioning them to job training, uh, helping them get their benefits. And we have currently 66 veterans who are indoors uh, in that center. I've named it uh, after Luis Dominguez, who was uh, a, a veteran from the Vietnam War who received the Purple Heart. And to the Vietnam veterans, we didn't give you the respect uh, that you deserved when you came home. Welcome home. Uh, and we're sorry for the way this country treated you. So thank you again for being here today. It is my honor uh, to take this moment. And may we all rededicate our lives to thanking our veterans, um, not just one day a year. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Janice Hahn. Now, I do want to uh, mention that we have a couple of faces of our commissioners that I recognize. I didn't see on our list here, so I do want to um, say thank you for your attendance. We have our uh, planning commissioners, Yarisma Rocha and Esther Silis. as well as our Veterans Commissioner, Gilbert Perez. And we have our sister city's uh, Commissioner, uh, Aldo Macias. Again, thank you, Supervisor Hahn, for joining us this morning, and Senator Bob Archuleta for joining us. Now, for today's program, I have a couple of special guests, and I know that you're going to enjoy this, that will be speaking today, both proudly serving their country, but in different eras. First, let me introduce to you our special guest speaker, Mel McMullen. Mr. McMullen was born in Los Angeles in 1925, and he was the middle son of three boys. His father volunteered to serve in the Army Air Corps in 1942 at the age of 43, and his older brother would train to be a pilot in the Army Air Corps a year later. At that young age of 18, Mr. McMullen would also join the Army Air Corps after he completed high school late in 1943. Mr. McMullen would attend gunnery school and receive flight training at March Airfield. And in late fall 1944, 1944, his crew was sent to Florida and eventually overseas to China to join the General Chenault's Flying Tigers 14th Air Force, assigned to the 308th Heavy Bomb Group, the 425th Squadron, based in Kunming, China, to fight the China Burma India Theater. 
Now, Mr. McMullen was the nose turret gunner, assistant engineer on a new B-24J nicknamed the Dragon Lady. And the bombing targets for the 308th Bomb Group included the Victoria Naval Docks in Nolun Harbor, the railroad marshalling yards and factories, and military installations around cities in eastern China. Now, after several months in Kunming, his squadron was relocated to Chengdu, about 400 miles north, where the 425th missions put them closer to cities in northern China. Now, after their combat missions were over, were over the crew was sent to Tezpur, India, where they were individually assigned as needed to crews hauling gas from China to India. The gas stockpile was to be used for the final assault on the Japanese homeland. And Mr. McMullen's flights from China to India ceased with the dropping of an A-bomb soon after that. Mr. McMullen was on his way home. Mr. McMullen would have a final rank as a tech sergeant, and he was awarded the Air Medal and the Distinguished Flying Cross, not for any one particular mission, but surviving over a couple hundred hours of aerial combat time. And upon returning home in 1946, Mr. McMullen met and married a beautiful young lady named Jennifer. And she's here with us today, who has shared life with him for 77 years and counting. They have three sons and four grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mel McMullen. When you stand next to Mayor Ed, I feel like a midget. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I met Mayor Ed in China a few weeks ago, and he uh, mentioned that they were having a veteran ceremony, so he invited me, and I kind of had the wrong impression. I thought there was going to be a handful of veterans and the city of, <laughs> city of Pico Rivera has turned out. I'm very proud. Um, we kept our roots in, in we're, we're neighbors. In 1950, well, we've already had enough speeches. I'll, I'll just make this short. <laughs> uh, you, heard, you heard my story. I heard, served in China uh, under with General Chenault. <laughs> On my return home from China, I met and married 77 years ago and counting. But our roots, I, we bought our first house in Whittier, oh, near Mines and, and uh, Norwalk Boulevard. That's when 1950, when they were taking out rows of orange trees and planting rows of houses. We bought a beautiful, brand new, three-bedroom house in that, in that area, uh, Norwalk and Mines, raised our three sons in Whittier. And then I was in the title insurance industry and I got a promotion to San Bernardino for about 50, close to 50 years. But last year, last January, we returned to Whittier in a senior living place, but it's it, Whittier was a great place to, uh, to raise kids in the 50s, and I'm sure it still is. But we we remained we had our roots remaining in Whittier. My son Tim was a high school teacher in El Rancho for about 35 years. His, his beautiful wife Carolyn is with us today. Uh, my other younger son and his family live in Denver. I guess I shouldn't, I didn't want to mention this, but my middle son uh, passed away during uh, COVID, not the COVID. The only good thing about it, he learned he had final stages of cancer. In three weeks, he was gone, but I didn't mean to start with this. At any rate, <laughs> thank you for having me.
Thank you, Sergeant McMullen. 98 years old. And I want to let you all know that, uh, that we had a Flying Tiger ceremony commemorating those veterans that were part of uh, the Flying Tigers in China. And that's where I met him. Little did I know that he was our neighbor here in Whittier. And more importantly, little did I know that his son taught at El Rancho High School. Um, an amazing connection. And thank you very much. We do want to honor the waves and the wax that served. Round of applause. Thank you for that. And Mr. McMullen, thank you for your service and coming down here to talk with our veterans here in our Veterans Day ceremony. Now, for our next keynote speaker, it's my pleasure to introduce a Pico Rivera hometown hero who served during the Vietnam War and became one of the most well-known detectives within the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, retired Lieutenant Gil Carrillo. <laughs> Going to give you a, a brief history on uh, Mr. Carrillo. He's a legend. Now, Mr. Carrillo entered the U.S. Uh, Army shortly after his graduation from El Rancho High School at the age of 17. And Mr. Carrillo served three years in the United States Army with a tour of duty in Vietnam with the 189th Assault Helicopter Company. While serving in Vietnam, Mr. Carrillo served as a crew chief on the Bell UH-1 Iroquois helicopters, nicknamed Huey. And the helicopters flying on the Medvac resupply and troop insertions and extractions from the first seven months in the country. And Mr. Carrillo then flew on gunships for his last five months prior to returning for statewide, stateside duty. Mr. Carrillo was awarded the Air Medal from the U.S. Army with several oak leaf clusters and the V for Valor. He was honorably discharged from the United States Army as a sergeant in 1971. And after serving in the U.S. Army, Mr. Carrillo began his studies at Rio Hondo College and further his studies at Cal State Long Beach. While attending college, he began his career in law enforcement with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. And here, it's getting better. A career that lasted 38 years. Let me give you a little detail. Now, during his 38-year career with the department, he served in several capacities, including custody, patrol, and he started the first plainclothes gang team in East Los Angeles. With his 38 years with the Sheriff's Department, he spent 21 years as an investigator in the Sheriff's Homicide Bureau. It was during his time as a homicide investigator, Mr. Carrillo was called upon to be the co-lead investigator on the notorious Night Stalker serial killer case that dominated local headlines in the mid-1980s, if you recall the Night Stalker. After his successful work in the Night Stalker case, Gill achieved the rank of lieutenant in the Homicide Bureau and the first Latino to achieve this rank within the Homicide Bureau. As a result of his work in the Night Stalker case, Mr. Carrillo has lectured all over the United States as well as Mexico and Panama. Most recently, Mr. Carrillo was the subject of a Netflix four-part docuseries on the Night Stalker case. Mr. Carrillo also just finished two years co-hosting the Jor Lopez OMG HI podcast. Gil Carrillo still proudly calls Pico Rivera his home. After six decades, he raised his three children in the city with his wife, Pearl, whom he's been married since 1970. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Gil Carrillo. I'm sitting here saying to myself, well, who is this guy? I just look at myself as another retired overweight Hispanic. <laughs> you know, I, I will tell you, it's, it's truly an honor and a privilege to stand before you. 
They say it takes a village to raise a child. Pico Rivera is my village. Without Pico Rivera, I wouldn't be here today. They, uh, he was a deputy sheriff from uh, then Norwalk Station. We didn't have Pico Station back then. That used to come around and check on us. What I thought then was fun, didn't realize it was good police work. You know, put your hands up on the car and pat you down. and. We joke about it. Well, he, he was always trying to keep us off the streets. And he said, if there's anything I can ever do for you, call me. I wasn't doing well in English. A bunch of classes I wasn't doing well. But I was not going to pass. She said she would pass me if I did a term, pra term paper. So I called that deputy sheriff. And he, I didn't call him. He stopped by. And I said, would you help me write a paper on cops? And he said, sure, he did. And he took me home that day to my parents and said, sign for this boy to get off the streets or he's going to end up dead or in prison. So at 17, I went in. My parents listened and they signed for me. Little did I know I wasn't going to get papas and frijoles anymore for a while. <laughs> and so it was, uh, it was good. I wanted to go. And it was an eye opener for me. Everything uh, that he just read to you is almost true. I got out in 1970. When I got out in 1970, I had three goals in life. One was I want to become a deputy sheriff. I want to become a cop, just so I could give back what he had given to me. He saved my life. I want to be able to do that for some kid. I want to go to college. I thought I knew I was mature. I come out of the service, I was mature. And I knew I was mature when I sent for my high school transcripts and I looked and I was embarrassed. I obviously thought D stood for damn good. <laughs> and uh, Rio Hondo let me in because I was a veteran. And I remember coming home with A's and the local council, the local uh, representative wrote a letter to my parents saying, congratulations, your son's made the dean list. And the first thing my mom said was, Miko, are you cheating? <laughs> no, no, this new me. I wanted, to become a, I wanted to go to college. I wanted to become a cop. I accomplished those things. Third thing I wanted to do was hook up with my ex-girlfriend, who wrote me a Dear John when I was in Vietnam. Not nice. I wanted to come home. I got out in 70, not 71. I wanted to get out, hook back up with her, get near out of the palm of my hand so I could break off with her and watch her suffer like I had. <laughs> I got out in June of 1970. By September of 1970, I had her eat out of the palm of my hand. The day after Christmas, 1970, booyah, we got married. <laughs> this year, will be 53 years. She's also from Pico Rivera. <laughs> Save me some money. I, anniversary 50, we couldn't do anything because of the pandemic. 51, I had COVID. 52, she had COVID. This will be our 53, so we're going to have a bash. We're going to have a party. And. Pico Rivera means so much to me. And I've spoken all over this US and all over the place. But nothing has touched me as much as the city of Pico Rivera. My daughter, one of my daughters, lives today in the house that I grew up in. And so the tradition will continue. When I was asked, uh, it was Gil Perez that sent me, Gil, I saw you sitting out here earlier. Uh, Gil Perez, there he is. I saw Gil, Gil sent me an email and said, hey, could you be our uh, keynote speaker? And I got excited. I said, are you kidding me? He's, certainly, it's an honor, it's a privilege. So and then I get another email. He told Pamela, wherever she went, in the back, Pamela. Straight, oh, there she is waving to me, Pamela. I, I called her up and I said, uh, she sent me an email and said I had to send her 
a copy of my speech. I called her up and I said, you know, I apologize to you. I'm not gonna be able to do this. And she said, why not? I said, because when I get up there, I speak from the heart. I don't write prepared speeches. And I can remember last year I was in Vegas. There's a group of over 5,000 people and I'm gonna be their first speaker 45 minutes in the morning. And so I'm having a glass of wine and some dinner with some attendees. They said, so what are you gonna talk about tomorrow? I said, I don't know. <laughs> and he said, you have nothing for I said, we'll find out when I get up there. <laughs> I spoke for 45 minutes and it was the first time I'd ever received a standing ovation from a crowd that big. And nothing was written. You just get up there, it's easy to speak if you tell the truth. Yeah. She said, no, 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 you don't have to write anything down. Just come out and please join us. And so I did. And I said I didn't write anything down. However, I'm gonna read to you. This is, I'm not the author, but I thought it was extremely profound and it really affected me. And I hope it affects you because my life, uh, I've been blessed, I'm, I'm lucky. Everything has fallen into place. And it, with three children, a wife, the same wife. <laughs> She's the glue that keeps everything together, trust me. 53 years, I think that's about 85 dog years, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I had back surgery and uh, I affectionately call her Nurse Ratchet. She's right there on top, make sure I don't bend over, don't lift anything up, we'll get it for you, sit, sit down, lay down. And uh, she got me back together again, and I'm ready to dance. Anyway, I will read this to you, and I, I, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I really don't need these things, but I want to look distinguished. So, I'm gonna put on some glasses. Now, to understand a military veteran, you must know, we left home as teenagers in our early 20s. We left as teenagers or in our early 20s for an unknown adventure. We loved our country enough to defend it and protect it with our lives. We said goodbye to friends and family and everything we knew. We learned the basics and then we scattered in the wind to the far corners of the earth. We found new friends and new family. We became brothers and sisters regardless of color, race, or creed. We had plenty of good times and plenty of bad times. I didn't get enough sleep. We smoked and drank too much, yeah. We picked up both good and bad habits. We worked hard and played harder. We didn't earn a great wage. We experienced the happiness of mail call and the sadness of missing important events. We didn't know when or even if we were going to see you home again. We grew up fast and yet somehow we never grew up at all. We fought for our freedom as well as the freedom of others. Some of us saw actual combat, some of us didn't. Some of us saw the world and some of us didn't. Some of us dealt with physical warfare. Most of us dealt with psychological warfare. We've seen and experienced and dealt with things that we can't fully describe or explain, as not all of our sacrifices are physical. We participated in time-honored ceremonies and rituals, each other strengthening our bonds and camaraderie. We counted on each other to get our job done and sometimes to survive it all. We have dealt with victory and tragedy. We have celebrated and mourned. We lost a few along the way. When our adventure was over, some of us went back home. Some of us started new and some of us never came home at all. We have told amazing and hilarious stories of our exploits and adventures. We share an unspoken bond with each other that most don't experience and few will understand. We speak highly of our own branch of service and poke fun at the other branches. We know, however, that if needed, we will be there for all our brothers and sisters and stand together as one in a heartbeat. 
being a veteran is sometimes, excuse me, is something that had to be earned and it can never be taken away. It has no money value, but at the same time, it is a priceless gift. People see a veteran and thank them for their service. We see each other and we give a little upward head nod or a slight smile, knowing that we've shared, we have shared and experienced things that most people have not. So from myself to the rest of the veterans out there, I commend and thank you for all that you have done and sacrificed for your country. Try to remember the good times and make peace with the bad times. Share your stories. But most importantly, stand tall and proud for you have earned the right to be called a veteran. I'm a veteran. Thank you. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, Gil. Thank you for your inspiration to all of us and all our veterans. Now we're going to transition to the veteran roll call. And today's uh, Veterans Day is a celebration to honor all American veterans for their patriotism and love of country and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. And it's a day for reflection and remembering. Pico Rivera starts uh, started a tradition of the roll call where we want to hear from all our men and women who have worn and now wear the uniform of our nation's military. I invite all of our veterans to come up to the microphone and we should have a, a separate microphone out here and that's going to be to your left and there's going to be also one to your right. So if I can have all our veterans come up and do single file lines to the uh, left and to the right and come up to those microphones and state your name, rank, and military branch. So veterans, let's have you come up there. And if you're unable to come up to the microphone, please raise your hand and a staff member will bring a microphone to you once we begin the roll call. And we ask that you be respectful as to our men and women in the armed forces uh, report their roll call. All right. Okay. Uh, Dave Marquez, uh, U.S. Army Specialist 4, Vietnam 66, 67. Uh, Rancho High, class of 1964. Thank you for your service, sir. And uh, I served my country to the best of my ability and came out in, in good health. So anyway, thank God and thank uh, our Lord and our uh, and are you country? So, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Ralph Serrano, Corporal, United States Marine Corps, July 1965, class of 1962, Al Rancho. Thank you, sir. Al Rancho graduate. My name is Alvin Robles. I'm a second World War veteran, I'm 98 years old, and I was served in the South Pacific for three years, and God brought me back. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Robles. Thank you for your service. Private First Class from Rudy Casas, uh, Army, 7th Division, 1949 to 1952. Served a year and a half occupation in Japan and combat in Korea. Thank you, Mr. Casas. Thank you for your service. My name is, my name is Charles Galliano. I served in the Navy in 1952 to 1956. I was on a heavy cruiser, the USS Bremerton. We were a flagship going overseas to South Korea. I will never 
for a kid. Being a veteran, what it means to me that I can share it with other veterans. Thank you very much. I was third class petty officer. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Gil Perez, U.S. Army, Vietnam, 1967-68, with Alerts 25th Division. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Ted Wirtz has served uh, Vietnam, U.S. Navy. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. My name is Stephen, re retired, retired Master Sergeant uh, Stephen Michael Bluford, uh, 23 years, in, uh, two years in Vietnam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Okay. Get close to the microphone, sir. Henry uh, U.S. Navy. 6971 E2. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Frank Fernandez, E5, U.S. Army, Sir Mary Shaw Valley, 6970. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is uh, Milo Gutierrez. I joined the, I'm one of the lucky ones. I joined the Navy in uh, late uh, 1960. Three. After I was in the Navy, safety on a ship, all help our Lucas in Vietnam, and they were drafting young men my age, 19 at the time, but I, was, I wasn't drafted because I had volunteered earlier. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, there were 56,000 casualties in Vietnam, which is uh, the, pop the population of a solid at Dodger Stadium. And, uh, I always think back, what would have happened to me if I hadn't volunteered? Here I am, 80 next year, and I'm still here, enjoying life up here, you know? Aches and pains, but still here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Michael is all the U.S. Army. Thank you, sir. Spec 4. Santa Diaz Jr., U.S. Navy, Coastal River Squadron 1, Vietnam Era Veteran, Attached SEAL Team 1, Support Unit. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Name, rank, and military branch. Dr. Specialist, Third Class, uh, Bamberg, Germany, 10th uh, Infantry Division, 7th Enrolled at 19 years old. Thank you, sir. My name is Fernando Gallardo. I'm a U.S. veteran. I'm a machinist made third class petty officer. I served during the um, Desert Storm, Desert Shield era. Thank you, sir. My name is Victor Misquez. I joined the Navy in 1951. I served on the USS President Jackson. We made trips from Japan to Korea. Both was made first class. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Rudy Bravo, U.S. Air Force, 1969 to 73. I've worked on uh, avionics uh, systems for uh, FRE Phantom fighter bombers. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Eddie Castorena, U.S. Army, Roosevelt, Rough Rider. Thank you. Joe Garcia, Army Infantry, 3rd Infantry Regiment, Washington, D.C. I did the burials at Audington National Cemetery for those who were killed in Vietnam. El Rancho, 65. Wow. El Rancho, graduate. Ignacio Almaguer, Air Force, 1971 to, no, 1967 to 71, a Sergeant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Ortiz, Corporal, USMC, Class of 1970, Arancho. Yes, sir. Arancho graduate. Thank you for your service. Tom Balderrama, United States Marine Sergeant, graduate El Rancho High School, 1971. Also went back in the Army, 1977. Retired in 1997. All right. Thank you, sir. 
future signs. 1965 to 1967, U.S. Army Persian Missile Unit. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Frank Oveo, Chief Master Sergeant, United States Air Force, retired, 41 years of service. Yes, sir. Thank you, Frank. Corporal David Padilla, uh, 69 to 71, Marines. Thank you, David. P.O.C. John Correal, drafted in the Marine Corps, changed my life. Graduated from Arancha with Gil, 1966. Correal, Correal, all the way. Thank you, sir. My name is Dave Nieto, Specialist 4, U.S. Army from 72 to 74. Last group to get drafted, uh, Rancho 1970. Frank Gonzalez, Sergeant, United States Air Force. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Paul Richard Camacho, United States Marine Corps, 1969 to 72. Amphibious Marine aboard the USS Iwo Jima. On a side note, I've been coaching in the city of Peak River for 47 years, and our team is in the championship game. Yes, sir. The Don's in the championship, and we also want to let you know that he's like one of our veteran commissioners. My name is Richard Valdez, U.S. Army, Spec 5, served with the 1st Infantry Division. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. I'm John Perez, uh, Sergeant E-5. I served in Vietnam 68-69, Tet Offensive. Uh, oh, Thank you, Mr. Perez. Thank you for your service. Joseph Torres, Sergeant, United States Army, 82nd Airborne, Afghanistan, all the way. Yes, sir, Mr. Torres. Thank you. Sergeant Franco, United States Army Specialist, 4th Class. I was a battalion mail clerk for the 8th Infantry. I was responsible for delivering the uh, Dear Johns, but not responsible for writing them. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. My name is Raymond Campos, Jr. I served with Fighter Squadron 29 aboard the USS Enterprise and USS Ranger, United States Navy, during the Vietnam conflict on the Bay of Tonkin. I graduated in 1961 from James A. Garfield, East Los Angeles. Yes, sir. My name is Jim Hart. I served with the 9th Infantry Division of Vietnam. Yeah, I don't regret one ounce of what I did. I love you. Benny Roman. My family all down here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. John Quintero, U.S. Army Airborne, born and raised in Pico Rivera. Yes, sir. Born and raised in Pico Rivera. Thank you for your service. Jack Persona, Specialist 4, 66 Vietnam, 1st Cav. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for your service. Joshua Gallegos, uh, United States Navy, uh, Vietnam deployments in 68, 69, 71, and 72, and um, board the USS Enterprise. I'm also a, a graduate of Rancho High School in 1966. And I, and I can also remember the times when Gil and I would play around King of the Mountain over at uh, behind the Winter Theater. Remember that, Gil? <laughs> All right, God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Gallegos. And he was one of our keynote speakers at our past uh, Veterans Day. Yeah, I'm E4 Kurt Chavez. Um, I served in the Army National Guard, uh, Forward Infantry Support, Supply 76 Victor, and from 1983 to 89, I'm a resident of Pico Rivera. Yes, sir, resident of Pico. Thank you for your service. 
Yes, uh, Mario Jimenez, Corporal, United States Army, uh, combat engineers, two years in Vietnam. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. Go on. Specialist Michael Ballesteros, Army, Rifleman, 1st Infantry Division. Thank you for your service. My name is Filiberto Morales, U.S. Army, served in Vietnam, 1966. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. Ruben Salgado, 387th MP Battalion in Korea for a little bit, and then transferred to Germany. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Marcelino Reyes, PFC-1, U.S. Army, one year in Korea, 61 to 64, and praise God for my life. Yes, sir, indeed. Thank you. Sergeant John C. Adame, uh, Vietnam, 67-68, fought in the Tet Offensive, a victim of Agent Orange. Uh, I'm sorry, but I was drafted out of Pico Rivera when I went to Salesian High School, 64. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Specialist 4, Mario Viduria, U.S. Army, 73 to 76. Live here in Pico Rivera since 79. I'm still here. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you for being a lifelong resident. Thank you. Uh, Staff Sergeant George Luna, uh, joined in 76, uh, retired in 2010, U.S. Army. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. I'm Francisco Juarez, uh, United States Marine Corps, 1969, Dong Ha, Vietnam. I'm currently the commander of the American GI Corps, and you're all invited to our event on Thursday the 16th at 11.30. Just bring some frijoles and some tortillas, and we'll be fine. Uh, One more thing. Yes, sir. Janice Han, this is in your area, ma'am. We sure hope we'll see you there. And viva Jesse Chavez. Thank you to all the men and women. Yes, we have a couple more. All right. Yes, sir. Anthony Rodriguez, the grade one army, 65, 66. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for your service. Staff Sergeant Sanchez, US Air Force, 1977, 1997. Department of Justice, ATF, 1999, 2022. And uh, Councilman Hahn, my father is and was a merchant marine, and he's 98 years old, but his discharge papers came under the Coast Guard. Coast Guard are in charge of vessels all over the sea. He's been all overseas and everything over in Europe, never got off a ship, they wouldn't let him get off. So, I thank him too. Thank you. Anthony Monteverde, 44, 52nd Hospital, went on vacation to Italy during the Korean co conflict and I never considered myself a veteran. But you know what? I am a veteran. I did my job. And I want to thank everybody, everybody from Pico River, because you're my life, you're my world. I've coached here for a few years. I've done a lot of things. And I've enjoyed life. And I thank everyone and I love all my people here in Pico Rivera. Que viva Pico Rivera. Yes, sir. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for your service. Daniel Garcia, uh, United States Navy, third class, petty officer, uh, hospital corpsman. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. Sergeant Bobby Tanner, United States Air Force. Yes. Bobby Tanner is one of our veterans commissioners here in Pico Rivera. Bob Castillo, United States Marine Corps, first eight inch howitzer battery, heavy artillery. And I graduated, sorry, Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Mike Contreras, 514th Air Wing, McGuire, Texas, in the 99th Battery, Al Salim, Desert Shield, Storm, and Freedom. And a proud county of Los Angeles employee. Yes, sir. Mike, special person indeed. Thank you for your service. Ramon Reese, uh, United States Marine Corps Sergeant, Operation Iraqi Freedom 2004, and I uh, 
did all my time with uh, Camacho's brother-in-law. Shout out to Guillermo. Yes, it is. Thank you for your service. A big round of applause for all the men and women of the armed forces. Thank you. We are veteran strong here in Pico Rivera. Let's stand and say a big thank you. We love our veterans. Now, we're going to transition to the Armed Forces theme songs. Now, each branch of the military service has its own official song, which is part of its heritage and an anthem to a rally behind. Now, please stand when you hear your Armed Forces medley, starting with the Army. Thank you for that. Now we do have uh, Council Member uh, Monica Sanchez with a special announcement. I, I wanted to invite all of the veterans. We have a gift for you from the city, a yard sign if you wish to pick it up under the tent on the left. We have metal stands you can display proudly in front of your home, as well as um, first come, first serve for the sizes a Pico Rivera Proud Veteran Honoring Our Own uh, t-shirt. 
here see our staff on the left for our veterans. So, and this gift is, this one is for our keynote speaker. We want to say thank you very much to Gil Carrillo. So all our veterans, please stay to the end of the ceremony so you can receive your gifts. Now moving on to the benediction uh, will be provided by Pastor Drew Cohen. Pastor Drew. Wow, what a great day. And the Bible says that we need to give honor to where the honors do. And uh, the Bible also says that we should be grateful people. And I am so grateful for the leadership that you have provided in saying that these veterans are important. And I'm just so proud of our city. And uh, I, I, Tamara and I, my wife, we just love Pico Rivera and what a honor it is to be part of this. Can we just close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer? Father, you are so, so good to us. And we pray that we would be grateful for all your blessings, that we would recognize that all good things come from the Father. And so God, we come to you today thanking you for these veterans, these people who have been willing to serve. God, we love you with all our heart. We thank you that this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor Drew. Now, as we come toward the end of the program, I'd like to remind everyone that our freedom we enjoy today is because of the brave veterans, both past and present. May we continue to fight against oppression, against, against injustice, and against those who seek to take our freedom. May God bless you and every service member, past and present, who answered our nation's call to duty. May God bless the United States of America. Which has always been and forever shall be the land of the free and the home of the brave. As we have the Southern California Brass Band close with God Bless America, let us use these final moments to meditate on all the freedoms we enjoy as Americans. And I want that to sink in. All of which are made possible by the sacrifice of our courageous veterans, all of you. Thank you for your service. And now the Southern California Brass Band will perform the final song, God Bless America. concludes our program. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all veterans and thank you Pete Rivera.